Welcome to Fort Collins, Colorado. In 2008, CNN awarded it the second best city in America to live in. In 2018, it was named the most bike-friendly city in America. And sometime in the last 30 years, it adopted the title the Napa Valley of Craft Beer. Who wouldn't want to live here? It is this title of the Napa Valley of Craft Beer that I would like to explore in this video. From dry to wet, Fort Collins from 1969 to 1989. You see, Fort Collins today has 23 craft breweries, but no one would have expected this in 1989 when its first three craft breweries opened their doors. Fort Collins actually used to be very conservative. You just wouldn't think so since thousands of tourists visit Fort Collins every year just to drink beer. Fun fact, it was actually a dry city for 73 years. It wasn't until 1969 that Prohibition was formally repealed. So how exactly did Fort Collins become the Napa Valley of craft beer? The years from 1969 to 1989 may provide some answers. As we know, the 1960s were a tumultuous time of change in America. Fort Collins is not exempt. Not surprisingly, the 60s manifested itself on Fort Collins College campus, Colorado State University. In 1968, students protested for the right to think by symbolically hosting a beer inn in the student center. You'll notice in the photos that they are drinking Coors Banquet, Colorado's most famous beer at the time. The success of the movement is not the subject of this video, but they were successful in another area, initiating the citywide repeal of prohibition. Now, let's broaden our perspective here and look at what the rest of America was drinking. After the repeal of national prohibition in 1933, three major brewing conglomerates consolidated the beer market. You can probably guess who they were. That's right, Anheuser-Busch, Coors, and Miller. They offered American beer that was bland, weak, and homogenous. Yeah, I said it. In contrast, craft beer has strong and unique flavors. In 1978, President Jimmy Carter paved the way for the so-called craft revolution when he legalized home brewing. Suddenly, ordinary people experimented in their homes, brewing with quality ingredients and traditional brewing styles. Home brewers became so passionate about their brews that they decided to open their own microbreweries. These microbreweries were independently owned and brewed the opposite of what the major macrobreweries were brewing at the time. Most of these breweries were concentrated on the West Coast though. Back in Boulder, Colorado, Charlie Papazian was spreading his love for homebrewing. First, he published a book called The Complete Joy of Homebrewing. Then he started hosting homebrewing events that eventually evolved into the American Homebrewers Association. You know the Great American Beer Festival? Yeah, he started that too in 1982. Meanwhile, Anheuser-Busch began lobbying in 1980 to build a brewery in Fort Collins, but they found that Fort Collins required convincing. Residents worried about the environmental impacts of a brewery, specifically when it came to its water supply, but they also worried about the cultural impact. This was a conservative town, remember? Well, in 1983, they voted in favor of the brewery and it was finally built in 1988. This marked a new chapter for the town. Fort Collins seemed to have an open mind and an open palate. The very next year, Fort Collins' own craft beer revolution began. Joe Neckel, a home brewer, opened the first craft brewery in town, Old Colorado Brewing Company. It opened at the Northern Hotel in Old Town. The Northern Hotel is still there, but Old Colorado Brewing Company is not. A few months later, Scott Smith, with the help of brewer Brad Page, opened Cooper Smith's Pub and Brewing in Old Town Square. Cooper Smith is still going strong. And two weeks after that, Doug O'Dell, another home brewer from the West Coast, with the help of his wife Winnie and sister Corky, opened O'Dell Brewing Company out of an old grain elevator. Pictured here is a sign from their present brewing location, not far from the original grain elevator. What they all realized was that Fort Collins was on the brink of change. Not only had Fort Collins opened its doors to Anheuser-Busch, but Fort Collins was surrounded by a thriving homebrewing culture. Charlie Papazian, Doug O'Dell, Scott Smith, Joe Neckel, and Anheuser-Busch were instrumental in crafting Fort Collins craft beer culture today. And with one craft brewery for every 7,600 people, I'd say they've earned that title of the Napa Valley of craft beer. <laughs>